How's everybody doing? It's Jim and we are looking at the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus. A big monster scooter from Vora Motors that retails for $24.99 and it's just a, it's kind of advertised as this untamed beast and I think that's a real good way to put this machine. Um, so it's got 60 volts battery, dual 40 amp controllers to 1200 watt nominally rated motors. Um, just a big sturdy machine. I'm uh, just going to give you a couple quick specs right off the bat. Uh, advertised weight is 101 pounds. I may have measured it at almost 110, 109.4 pounds. Um, dimensions wise, I'll put some dimensions here on the screen that talks about dimensions more specifically overall. And then we're going to jump in at a little nicer camera angle, give you some of the details and some more dimensions pop up there. All those will be also duplicated down in the description. All right, here we are looking at the Wolf Warrior. I'm going to go in here and give you some of the details of it. So up here on the handlebars, we got the i3 display with your e-gear mode selector button there. Uh, locking grip, which is it feels a little thin, but it's uh, pretty solid to actually have a locking grip there. Now uh, Cabo's nice big clamp. Come over here to your horn and light button, and it has two modes that I'll show in some night footage: a strobe mode and a solid mold mode. Get the side view of those zoom hydraulic disc brake levers with cutoffs in there. The i3 display there comes to life as you can see and we have a number of different options through the odometer trip, charge cycles, speed limits, and then to get into the different deal tilt, uh, the different P settings you go into that part of the menu and you know you have a whole bunch of options in there like the i3 display does. Yep life from a stop or if you have to kick start which i probably wouldn't kick start this particular scooter you got e-brake settings speed settings a lot of stuff like that to uh get you dialed in how you want it we're gonna come down here down the uh the double stem which is just a real beast of a stem down to the locking mechanism which you can see that you got a locking pin and you also have the like a double safety on this mechanism and because your hinge point is right here it is super solid we got these big leds here in the front with a really loud motorcycle horn the cabo wolf emblem and the dual kind of more of a motocross style stanchion we got the zoom hydraulic disc brakes here they do a pretty good job stopping this heavy scooter good look here the dual 1200 watt 60 volt motors with a big old 11 inch tire here that yeah, 11 inch tubeless tire. One note is these rims do not separate. They are cast one piece rims, so tire changes will probably be a little bit of a bear. And I'm seeing already, I think you might tend to go through tires on this particular scooter. Rubberized deck with two charge ports. They are both three prong ports. There is a fast charge option, but the default charger is 1.75 amps. So it takes a month of Sundays to recharge the massive 35 amp hour 60 volt pack which gives you like 2100 watt hours of capacity right there in front of the charge port is the button to turn on the under deck lighting which i'll show on the night footage as well big beefy kickstand uh, just took a little nick there as i took my first spill on an electric scooter to date back to the other the rear tubeless rim with a nice tail light there mounted above it. Just gonna pan one more time down this bad boy. You can just see it, you know, you got the Velcro there to manage your cables. There's some customization of where you can place some things, you can move them up and down. You come around the deck, the deck seems solid and traction seems good. Um, you got this nice tubular style um, that kind of has a little bit more industrial look to it, but I think it looks really sharp. Single motor. And here there's a little clunk 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 there. Uh, this is not the first scooter I've had with that same noise. What happens is I guess there's a small misalignment in the rear and just uh, changing the alignment, uh, basically dropping down the motor and then re tightening it down should get rid of that. But you should hear that go away here as soon as I speed up slightly. <laughs> so you can see this level two eco mode single mode single motor we're easily getting over 20 miles per hour 
and that's really as fast as I ever ride. Now we're in turbo mode, single motor, and we get there even quicker. So the, the dis difference between eco and turbo mode is not that extreme with this scooter. I am not gonna make the mistake and try to hand signal again. So gonna go back to eco mode, dual motor. We're staying in assist level two. So we're gonna just see kind of what we got going on here. Again, I'm not gonna do much more than this, but you can see right there, we're at 22. I'm gonna go down to mode one. And so in mode one, it's just so such a drastic difference. You're capped out there. So you can get real fast up to your limit. But, but there we're in mode one. So then we get turbo dual motor. We, uh, you start seeing what a beast this can be. Hopefully you're able to see I'm barely touching the throttle. Uh, and I, I'm not gonna push the speed on this, but you can tell that you know, I'm easily going over 20 miles per hour in speed limit one. They advertise a top speed of 50. Uh, I think that's probably reachable depending on your weight. I do have the cruise control on if I can be steady enough on the throttle. I'm gonna hit back into eco mode because I'm really finding, for me, eco mode dual motor it's the way to go. You really get all the power still. All right, you don't get all the power, but you still have more power than you can really even do anything with. with without quite as much of the harshness coming from the crazy amount of torque. So you got the dual 40 amp controllers that are pushing out, you know, you're, you're pushing a lot of watts to those 14 or 1200 watt rated motors. All right, here we on the hill climb. We're just gonna see how this does. Three, two, one. I'm not even gonna give it the full seas. I don't wanna scare people. Stop. So I didn't really top out that hill. Um, it's just ridiculous how easy that climbed it. I could have climbed it still accelerating quite quickly. Well, the one thing I'm noticing, one, there's a little bit of a low handlebar height on the Wolf. Somewhere in the 37 to 37 inch range, which for me at five foot 10 inches feels a little low. But I would say the handling is heavy, uh, but, but adequate. You know, it's, it, you wouldn't expect for a scooter of this size and this robustness to really be a, that nimble. Um, the suspension feels, to me, comfortable but firm uh, at 175 pounds or about 80 kilograms um, so you know a heavier rider might enjoy this handling even more nope. there you just heard a little skid on the braking i'll put my braking acceleration information on the screen right now um, my biggest challenge when doing acceleration was keeping the wheel spin down um, it just is a real torquey, torquey scooter. And, you know, it's, it's just a beast. I'm gonna do a little trail riding. See, see how these really wide tires uh, do on that. It takes a little getting used to, getting used to the throttle feel on this thing. Cause it's, it's, you know, it's sensitive. And I'm in, oh boy, I'm in eco mode. So I haven't done any trail riding to this point on this scooter. And oh man, that's that's a little harsh. Um, well, it's uh, it's really not sucking up the bumps on this all that well at all. This is, I mean, this obviously does not have the off-road tires. Um, they, this option, that option, I couldn't get that option when I ordered. I, you know this. Ooh, I don't. I I was really expecting a lot better 
off-road performance through from the suspension to be honest um, maybe if I had a hundo, another hundo on me I would I'd be a little more happy about it you can hear the like the, the kickstands kind of slapping around back there it's kind of tossing me around a little bit All right. so this is one thing I think you're gonna run into problems with with the uh, Cool for you. Of course, we're at 100% power, so maybe for trail running, you would need to get into the display and really play with your settings, just so you get a more, you know, you don't really want to be in a experience when you got a whole bunch of wheel spin all the time, uh, like right there. Like, I mean, get a feel for how amazingly torquey this thing is. What I'm noticing here is in. Uh, single motor mode, um, even though the output should be sort of in the same amount going to that back motor, it just doesn't, it doesn't give you the, especially the traction side. Uh, that front motor seems like it really just elevates the traction to a, a big amount, more than, more than I was really expecting. So I have ridden so far, oh, only seven miles. I thought I rode a lot further than that. Well, I'm still 100% battery, so I guess I haven't ridden anywhere. I don't know how accurate that battery because I see the voltage there is at 64. All right, I'm gonna let's see if I'm gonna see if with a little more speed, if if I, so on this, this like this, this is not bad. It's still a little rough though. Surprisingly rough to me. I thought the uh, between the pretty big air volume in the tires and the suspension, it would be handling this uh, kind of stuff a lot better than it is. You can, you can hear how ridiculously fast these motors spool up. Um, it does have a horn. I am not going to honk it here because it will scare these people on the path. I would be wary of using this horn in a lot of situations. Like at this speed of 15 to 20 miles per hour for me, I do feel like I'm, I'm having to overly actively steer a bit. Um, like it almost favors a more aggressive, aggressive riding style. So the way that was not really performing great to me off-road, um, I think if you were a very aggressive rider, very fast rider, I think you might enjoy this. Uh, it just gives you, it you know, feels pretty planted. Uh, yeah, I think it could work. But you can see cruising along at this, you know, 15 to 20 mile per hour range. The motors just hum along pretty nice and quietly. No, they're not saying that. And so I'm just going to hold the throttle here on this hill and see if, if we really get much I mean, it didn't really slow it down. And look, I can just, in the steepest part of the hill, I can just hit it hard and go way through it. So there's a there's a fender, but then there's a center part. Uh, there's a plastic fender, but then there's a center portion that's actually metal. I feel like I can kind of rest my foot upon there um, when I'm trying to ride a little more aggressively. Uh, a lot of scooters have that, and it does really help when you're really trying to dig in and, and get a lot of control over the scooter. So on a street like this, it's bumpy. The, the suspension, it's real firm. Like I, I'm still getting a lot of road, road uh, vibration transmitted through. You can kind of hear it in the scooter there a little bit. A little surprising to me. Oh my gosh.
Well, that was... That was rough. I'm not real happy with the ride quality on this. So this is kind of a interesting thing I'm finding that, um, you know, I've only been, I've been riding not even 10 miles and I feel, uh, shit, maybe, maybe that's because I wiped out. Oh God. All right, so I just turned it up to e-brake level four. I'll show you kind of what it does. Oh yeah, so it's like about halfway in the braking. It really, the e-brake comes on late and that doesn't feel good. That e-brake level four feels like not good. So we're gonna go back to two. Uh, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna try one other setting change. All right, well, so I turned down the fast start setting to the lowest, slowest. Um, it's still not, I mean, saying that slow is, it'd be a silly understatement, but it does take a little of the real jerky, early trigger throttle joltiness out of it. Now, it, it I, I'm finding this much more pleasant. It gives you, it gives you a second or two to, to hang on versus uh, feeling like this thing's just gonna run out from under you. I'm curious if there's hull sensors in, I don't know if you saw that. So I'm just hitting the throttle and, and see how it goes back and forth. That tends to be the artifact of a non-hull sensor, uh, non-hull sensored motor. And I think that's probably a little bit why uh, the motor just feels so unbridled with its torque output. Um, a hull sensor motor senses a little more where the position of the motor is in relation to the bulk of the magnets and windings. And so it applies power in a little more, I, I don't know if linear is the right word for it, but a little more measured fashion. So my summary on the Wolf Warrior. Um, I'll be clear, this is the first scooter I've went down on. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> this is the first scooter I've had a wreck on. Um, and ironically, it was when I was trying to hand signal. So even though it's a big wide scooter that feels stable with the wide tires, you really can't let go of the handlebars like most scooters. And I think I either goose the throttle or tap the brake, which the front brake is on the left on this scooter. I mean, on the right side. So I think that all led to me going down. The scooter suffered very little uh, issues. I was definitely more marked up than the scooter was. So um, I did not ride a full range test. Um, it just, uh, this scooter is a lot larger than I would typically ride. and. I kind of felt a little bit, uh, a little bit taxing to ride, if I was going to be honest. On uh, just because there's so much torque and it's coming at, and I didn't change any of the torque settings. There are three torque settings I did not change, so maybe that would have helped the scenario a little bit. Um, but I went, I only rode 15 miles, and uh, the displacement I had 90% battery. Uh, going by the voltage, that was actually about 80% by the voltage. I had about 63.6. 63.3 volts remaining. Um, recharging from that point still took almost 700 watt hours uh, to get back in here, and it took oh, a little over six hours. So recharge times are quite long with this with the stock 1.75 amp charger, and that kind of uh, efficiency that I saw on my ride, which was a variation of speed, not a lot of top speed riding, mostly around 20 miles per hour, about 50 watt hours per mile. And I hope a lot of more electric vehicles, scooters, and bikes get to disclosing this number, because it gives you an idea of what you can really expect for range. Um, so at 50 watt hours per mile, that's a pretty high consumption. Um, if you were to go faster, you would consume more. And at, at my weight of 175 pounds, or about 80 kilograms, you would consume less if you're lighter than me. So, um, so that extrapolating out to 80% of the battery using that sort of uh, amount of consumption would put me at a 34 to 35 mile range at going about 20 miles per hour. So, you know, I know the advertised range is a lot more than that in eco mode, 70 miles, and then like 40 miles at, at full out. 
I know that's tested with a 165 pound rider. I'm still very skeptical of those numbers. So you get a really great rugged, like basically a triple safety folding mechanism, nice wide tires, incredibly powerful motors. And it feels like a bit like this untamed beast, like they described it, of, of a scooter. Um, the ride refinement isn't really high, um, but if you're just an adrenaline junkie, I think this is a great scooter. If you're using it to commute, I'd say this is completely overkill for that scenario. There are a lot of other options, including ones from Vora Motors that would probably be better. But it, this is a scooter that draws a lot of attention, good and bad. Um, you know, the lights are bang up good on it. It's a real solid, I like the industrial look of it. I like the tubing style. Um, it, it's a pleasing look to me. For me personally, the overall, just the bulk of it isn't, isn't a scooter that really fits my, my use, I guess you would say. But it's been a lot of fun to look at this and share this with you. I hope it helps you out. Have you any questions about this, please put them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. If I can't find the answer, I'll do my best to find it for you. So thanks a lot. See you next time. Catch the wave.